interested to hear more about how uh, your quantum system evolved with time. I mean, you have the, the Schrodinger equation that describes the evolution of, of, of time of your system. Yes. But then you have Heisenberg uncertainties that tells you sure. you can only observe within certain finite interval of time, otherwise you get diverged energetically. You're asking so, about the time energy uncertainty yes, relationship. Yes, so how, how, you know, can you tell us more about how time behaves in, in this situation? No. Well, look, I mean, Kelly, the time-energy uncertainty relationship is probably the most misunderstood and abused of all of these formal relationships. Uh, and, and let me not try to give a, a, you know, a succinct account of it. Uh, I, I may get it wrong, and I don't want to make such errors. If I can just talk about the momentum uh, position uncertainty relationship, though. Uh, and I think the issue here is, um, to what extent do we expect quasi-classicality to emerge with any precision from the quantum forms. And the quantum reality is whatever it is. Okay, I already discussed yesterday briefly, I think, what the significance of Ehrenfest's theorem for a particle well-localized, one particle state, well-localized in position of momentum. It wanders around obeying approximately classical equations. But it's not a point in phase space wandering around. It's a smudged out region. And the uncertainty relationships are telling us just how point-like can it get. And the answer is within cells of order H cross. Just one quick one. Uh, an arrow of time seems to be absolutely essential in all this, Simon. You, you, you start with a great big thick thing at the bottom, low part of time, and then it splits up. Sure, Comments, sure, please. Sure. I, I you can define uh, a consistent history space going the opposite direction in time. You can define a consistent history space going the opposite direction in time. What that consistent history space would look like, what those histories look like, um, what sort of physics we can understand in those terms, I'm not going to try to summarize now. But in itself, this formalism is not, does not require an arrow of time or dictate an arrow of time. I think it's no different, really, from classical system mechanics, actually. Except, of course, that the probabilities at issue in classical system mechanics now have a proper grounding in objective amplitudes and branching structure. I mean, the branching structure can be there in both directions of time. Thank you very much. Thank you.